So here's another book review. I wanted to talk about um, Procopius uh, Anecdota, also known as The Secret History of a Tyranny. And I have spoken about Procopius before. He was the, um, basically the secretary of a Byzantine general in the 6th century. AD, um, basically the, the biggest uh, Byzantine general, and he fought with him, or he, he accompanied him on his wars uh, in Persia, then against the Vandals in North Africa, and against the Goths in Italy. And he more or less described this, these wars in a rather neutral way, speaking very positively of the Byzantinian side. He also wrote a book about the architecture that um, Justinian built in Constantinople and where he praised his, uh, his architecture and his works and his government very much. Now uh, in Anecdota, it's his last book, he basically um, revokes all that he said before and he completely uh, demonizes Justinian and Theodora and also Belisar and his wife and um, he basically says that before when he was still in service and when the Emperor was still alive he could not speak the truth about the Byzant Byzant Byzantium about the Byzantinian government about the emperors and the generals uh, because it would have cost him his head they would have killed him or they would have dismissed him or banned him so in this book he describes everything truthfully and he basically says how how big of a, of a mass murderer Justinian were and also Theodora and also the general Belisar and that he didn't enter North Africa and conquer it peacefully basically being welcomed with open arms by the population there but that he actually massacred the whole place and that after he went there it was basically void of any people and he also states that about um, about the whole government of Justinian and he says that um, over a hundred million people were killed during Justinian and Theodora's reign and it's it's very it's, it's very hard to describe um, how he talks about these two people because this book is just filled with yeah with anecdotes um, that happened during the reign and with so many instances where um, it showed that these people were totally selfish and they were just after their own gains after making more and more money they so they deprived all the um, uh, people who possessed something they deprived of their riches they ruined the trade and they had this policy of divide and conquer where they had these different factions in Byzantium you know the green ones and the blue ones and they were fighting against each other and the emperors they would just switch sides and sometimes support this party sometimes support that party just uh, just how it suited them you know so that their only goal was practically to accumulate riches for themselves and in this manner they massacred uh, entire countries and they massacred their whole uh, their own people basically their own soldiers their own uh, administrators and ministers um, and they basically did everything wrong what you could possibly do wrong you know just for their own selfish needs uh, they never thought about governing well or uh, putting in policies to stabilize the country or to allow for the trade to flourish they just did basically stupid shit you know just an example they ruined their own military by taking away by, by reducing the wages for the soldiers and by reducing special benefits that um, all the soldiers would get you know that by, by basically removing all the incentives for the people to perform and to be loyal they removed all those incentives and deprived all the old generals and and officers of their honors and of their livelihood uh, just to save money and on the other hand they gave the Huns who were constantly invading the northeast of the country 
they gave them more and more tribute and they basically fulfilled all their demands uh, which didn't stop the Huns from invasing, invading they would just invade anyways you know so they lost all their money giving it to the Huns and, and to recuperate that they just weakened their own military and destroyed the morale of their own military and this is just a, a, a small example from millions of other examples um, Theodora was basically the daughter of uh, uh, a circus, uh, like, a, like a car driver in the circus, you know, like the race, a race driver in the circus, I think. And she grew up in all this this entertainment industry, you know. She she didn't really know how to act, so she basically was a whore from the beginning, you know, and um, you know took off her clothes and on the stage, and was famous for being completely. Uh, corrupt, you know, morally corrupt and sleeping around with everybody from a young age. So she basically was a whore, a prostitute, and somehow Justinian, uh, I don't know, fell in love with her or she managed to to wrap him around her small finger. And so this is how she became the empress. And she's sometimes depicted as this woman basically that came from the gutters and worked her, her way up as a woman to the highest rank of power and then uh, she had all these pro-female policies and and um, you know this, she's basically an example of early feminism you know and but in the end according to, to Procopius description she's just a, t a tyrant who uh, is responsible for the deaths of millions of people and um, who would massacre uh, her own servants, her loyal servants, just um, you know, just because she was feeling like that, you know, just because she was angry about some minor issue, and yeah, it's 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 actually hard to describe um, what these people were. Um, Maybe let's just go over some of the, um, the um, chapters. So the first chapter is about Belisar, uh, the general uh, who fought all these wars for Byzantium. And it describes him, how he's just completely dependent on his wife, who's always cheating on him. And he is so weak as a man that he would rather uh, stop pursuing an enemy or stop... Uh, a siege of an important town uh, that he has to take he would you know abort his military missions to be in bed with his wife uh, in the evening and to please her and to please her ever increasing needs in spite of her always cheating on him and treating him like garbage basically you know so uh, so he was completely under control of his wife and this is how he fucked up so many uh, military campaigns for uh, for the Byzantines, you know, in the east and, and everything. Um, and also he lost his war against the Goths in Italy. And in the process, he just depopulated the entire country and um, because of his mismanagement uh, and his requisitions. And it is always portrayed as if the Goths invading Italy had ruined the, the Roman civilization, had destroyed everything and killed everybody. But that's actually not the case. The Goths just took over the government in Italy and it was then the war that Byzantium waged against the Goths and the, Byz the Byzantine policies in that war that actually emptied the country of people and destroyed Rome, Western Rome basically. You know, this is according to this book, uh, to Procopius. And it was not the Germanic people at all who were the savages but the, the Byzantines themselves who were just completely selfish and, and degenerated to the core um, and just uh, had their own interests uh, in, in, in mind and also all these generals and officials of the government they were not um, doing favorable policies and doing things that were honorable and just and right and efficient they were always doing what would save their lives because everybody was in danger of being killed in this time, everybody was afraid uh, because the, the emperors were so erratic in their behavior that basically when you showed signs of, um, of honor and honesty, 
your, your chances were high to be killed quickly, you know. And it appears that the more corrupt and the more treacherous you were, the, the higher your chance of survival was. Because um, Justinian had this sense of, of goodness and evil, you know. So if, if he sensed that somebody would be a, a, a loyal servant, um, then chances were, were high that this guy would probably um, conspire against him because he was so corrupt. You know, so he just surrounded himself with people who were equally corrupt, and everybody in the in the in the empire had to be like that to increase his chance of survival. So what he also did, he started all this religious persecution. There were there were many uh, different Christian sects at the time, and also pagan people in the empire, and he started to persecute them and use their religion as um, a means as a pretext to take their riches away and their possessions, you know. So this is how all this Christian dogmatism started that later on swept over all of Europe, you know, with Rome as a, as a center of the Vatican. And it had nothing to do with, with piety or with, uh, you know, the right uh, interpretation of the Holy Bible or anything like that. No, it was just simple power policy. It was just a pretext to take away the rights and the possessions of other people. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just uh, insane. There was all this, this uh, street terror in Byzantium where these two factions, the blue ones and the green ones, were constantly uh, warring against each other and, and killing each other and, and killing innocent people here and there. You know, you, you had to be either one of the greens or the, the blues to survive and then you know you, you were a target I mean they, they would just kill each other and, and, and uh, in, in the most ruthless way uh, and, and fight for the power on the streets and Justinian and Theodora they, they used this mechanism to their own advantage you know sowing division among the people for their own benefit um, at one point um, Procopius goes as far as to call Justinian the lord of the demons and to actually su uh, suggest that he is not a human but a demon from hell who just came to earth to uh, kill as many people and to ruin as many humans as possible uh, and, and to destroy the, the Roman Empire, you know, it's, it's pretty insane. And uh, th th there's even these anecdotes where he said that people who were around uh, Justinian reported that he was like uh, shape-shifting his face, you know, in some into some demonic form or that suddenly um, his head would be flying around the, 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 his courtroom and then, you know, reattached to his body or something like that. Or it was reported that he would almost never sleep, you know, he was never seen sleeping, but he would always um, walk around his palace all night, you know. So these were, were things that made people su suggest uh, or speculate that he was not even human. And on the other hand, um, Theodora would just uh, uh, celebrate orgies every night and every day and sleep until two o'clock in the afternoon and, and you know, just, just uh, uh, wallow in, in, in luxury, you know. and, and um, and do everything for her own sexual and, and personal needs, you know, and never care about anybody in any way. And what is interesting about this uh, Theodora character is that from the start she was this completely moralless thing, you know, and we are now coming into an age where this is pushed by our uh, media, you know, to be completely without morals, to accept um, sleeping around from a young age, to have multiple boyfriends and girlfriends, to swap around to girlfriends, and to, to be just a sexual person, you know, like the sexualization of our youth and of our society is so advanced already, so that it is more important nowadays what kind of sexual identification you have than what kind of job, for example, what kind of skills you possess, you know. In the 19th century, it would be super important how good of a craftsman you are or how good of a scholar. That would determine your 
your social identity and nowadays this seems to be completely irrelevant you know this seems to be some kind of oppressive mechanism that deprives people of their value you know that you look at a skill of, of, of a person nowadays it seems to be sufficient to identify as this or that type of sexual orientation and this seems to identify and, and define the people nowadays and this this is basically what Theodora did she, she, she just uh, followed her own sexual instincts from the very start and she reached the very top of, a, of the power structure and she became this horrible tyrant you know who because when you only follow your own needs your own feelings um, this is you know this is depicted as something good nowadays you know fulfill yourself fulfill your dreams follow your feelings follow your needs um, but if you do that you just become addicted of your own dopamine cycles you know and this Theodora is a very important it's a very interesting example of that because she was addicted to luxury and to fun and to to her own uh, sexual adventures and she didn't regard anything else as important you know the fulfillment of her own needs was her sole purpose in life and she would sacrifice entire generations of people for that you know she would just kill anybody who stood in the in her way you know and i think we are heading uh, more or less in this direction and i mean many people are worried nowadays um about the world that we live in how how insane how stupid everything is and i think it is because the the sexuality is so important nowadays and so prevalent and not the morals and not what is right and honest and honorable but what is important nowadays is what you want you know and there's also this saying of um, i think alistair crowley one of those um, satanist people in the usa who said um, do what thou wilt shall be your law or something like that you know do what you want is your law and this is basically what what creates the worst tyranny and the worst egotism and the greatest slaughter and, and misery on in this world you know and this is in this in essence what what morality actually is you know a not self unselfish behavior and a behavior that serves more the community than your own self and that serves uh, a higher purpose you know not just the fulfillment of your needs because these bodily needs these sexual needs for example or these cravings for luxury and for material things they can never be satisfied you know never ever it is a bottomless pit it is a hungering void basically you know that can never be satisfied and for only following that uh, will lead to yeah to a very horrible place to live in um, everybody who's worried about how the world is looks like today should read this book and and he can see that it can get much worse than what we have right now and it is interesting to consider this when you have people, you know, when you have, for example, this accelerationism, you know, some people think that the whole system should just collapse um, and then something better could be built in, in its place uh, and they try to accelerate this. But one argument against accel accelerationism could be this book because it can be a long way before it collapses you know and, and along the way um, it can get much much worse and I can't even describe how insane how fucking insane the times of Justinian and Theodora were um, but they were much much worse than what we have right now you know more comparable to like a Bolshevist system like you know in, in the communism in, in Russia that was a little bit comparable. The insanity, the madness, the the sacrifice of human life, the disregard for human life in communism is, is comparable to what Theodora and Justinian did. So, yeah, just consider this, that it can get much worse. And I don't know if we should maybe 
try to pull it around and to behave more morally correct or more um, you know sustainable right now and and less uh, insane you know um, I don't know anyways uh, it's an interesting read Procopius the secret history uh, to put things in perspective and um, yeah to to know what Christianity or imperialism actually means you know 